Tara, this is Ravya, and I'm here to ask you about astrobiology and origin of life and how, how as a geologist and coming from a different background, you are answering this question that how did life emerge on Earth? Really curious about the world. Um, since I was a little girl, I was always looking up at the stars at night and wondering, you know, what else there is to, to this life, essentially. And, um, and so, in a, to not go into a huge amount of detail about how I ended up into university, but, um, but long story short, I decided at the age of 23 or 24 that I wanted to go to university and study science and I wanted to do astronomy and astrophysics. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, but, but the problem was I didn't have a background in mathematics or physics or anything like that. So I was really starting from scratch in a university degree in something that I had really no knowledge of. And so I failed actually my first subject, which was maths in, in that degree. Um, and it, it made me rethink, well, what, you know, what am I actually going to, um, to do with this science degree? Um, and I actually took a trip to New Zealand and I uh, walked across um, the Tonga Riro Crossing, which is this really beautiful 17 kilometer hike um, through beautiful volcanic terrain where the, the earth has essentially been ripped open um, by, by volcanic eruptions. And it just made me completely enthralled by the planet earth essentially. Um, and I thought, well, okay, like, why would I study the planets out in the sky when I can study one that I'm actually standing on? And so I decided to study geology. And through studying geology, I found out about astrobiology, which, it, which as you mentioned, is the search for life elsewhere, and it includes the origins of life. Um, and also, and so I studied geology and I ended up working out in the outback of Western Australia. And, um, and in order to answer a question like the origin of life, you have to understand what types of environments um, were available on a very early earth to allow for life to take a foothold. Um, and so by studying uh, ancient rocks in the Pilbara um, with other researchers, um, we've found that there were environments which, uh, that are conducive to um, potential origins of life. And so that's how geology um, fits into the broader discipline of astrobiology and answering these bigger questions. So for me now, um, it's about, it's been, it's become about studying our own planet and understanding how life have, have, may have evolved here or, you know, what was available to life here from the very beginning to then understand in terms of what we would search for elsewhere. Um, and so that's, that's essentially for me a full circle um, in terms of wanting to answer big questions, being curious about the world, um, not necessarily, you know, um, going on a on like a straightforward path, starting out in one particular field, realizing that wasn't necessarily for me, but ending up in another field, which still allowed me to. Um, pursue the things that I was interested in, um, in, and that being the platform of geology. And so, you know, it hasn't been a straightforward path, um, but it's been one that has satisfied my curiosities. Um, and I continue to, you know, really strive to do research in the field of astrobiology. Um, and, and that includes for me sort of learning more about the evolution of life on Earth in combination with the geological processes that have happened through time since the, the very beginning and how it's actually a co-evolving system going on um, on Earth and how that might um, inform us as to what we would search for in terms of uh, planetary systems in, in other solar systems essentially. Um, so that's really like my, the, the full story and the full scope of, of, you know, where I've come to, how I've got there. Um, and and it, it's really what gets me out of bed in the morning, um, doing something interesting and satisfying those curiosities. And I guess that is more important than anything else. Um, you actually inspired me uh, to start over. And I always used to worry that, okay, I'm getting old and I won't have time to choose my career and what direction I wanted to go in. But you are basically, you were the one person that who inspired me that, okay, there is no timeline uh, to decide that what you want to do in your life. And you can do actually whatever you want to. <laughs> At any time, yeah, 100%. And that's exactly why, you know, we should be sharing these kinds of stories and, and our passions as well, because 
for exactly what you said. I mean, that makes me, you know, really, um, really like quite happy to hear that that has been an inspiration for you. Um, and that, and like, you know, like in your shoes, there have been people that have inspired me um, who were also, you know, had careers before. Um, I mean, Abigail Allwood is actually somebody that inspired me and, um, you know, uh, she had a had she also did a PhD a little bit later um, as far as I know and that inspired me to um, to also do the same thing and pursue a passion even when you think that you know time is too late or you you know you've gone down one path like honestly I I completely agree with you it's never too late to change direction. Um, um, and follow, you know, you know, do the pursuits that that, that make you get out of bed in the morning, essentially become, um, or no matter what the challenges uh, arise, even if, you know, you, you, um, there are some things you may not be good at, that's fine, you know, find something else that you are good at and apply that to, to the passion that you have. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true, totally true. How geology help us to understand the emergence of life? So uh, geology, I mean, geology essentially helps us understand um, the emergence of life uh, on a number of levels. One being that we can look at the geological record and look at the types of environments that were available very early on um, in Earth's history. And so that allows us to you know, essentially connect dots from um, from biochemists who look at uh, the prebiotic sort of um, reactions that are needed to get to um, biology and sort of tie in with what kind of environments would be conducive for those prebiotic reactions. Um, and so it, it kind of provides this context in which um, allows us to contemplate uh, where and how life may have started. Um, and, and it's really about, geology is really about context and environment and habitability. Is an environment habitable for life um, to, to emerge and evolve? Because obviously like a, a volcanic, you know, lava erupting on the land surface and, and you know, being really hot and sort of melting everything away is not going to be a really necessarily conducive um, place for life to start but maybe the heat generated from that volcano a little bit further away in a passive place where there's some groundwater um, and it's heating up that groundwater and allowing hot water to flow and create hot pools that might be a, that might be an ambient sort of environment where these kind of reactions can happen that's then your you know your geological context of where um, where different types of emergence might happen. And so it's really about context and environment from a geological perspective in the emergence of life. That's great. Um, actually, you were you also, you have inspired me so much over these old years that I was always interested in origin of life, but I never, I had no idea that, okay, how as a, you know, as a student, I can actually address that question. How can I actually understand that question? I always, I always thought, okay, I want to understand it. And I will always was interested in geology, but I never had the chance to study it. So now I have decided to actually take ge geology um, once I finish my studies over here and then I will go abroad. And I guess all the credit goes to you. <laughs> for being no, that's great. great person. Yeah. So, that's, that's, yeah, that's your story has inspired me so much that I wanted to share with others that what kind of major challenges and problems you faced while choosing your college major? Um, okay, so probably the biggest challenge, uh, to be honest, okay, so to be honest, the um, I didn't have much of a challenge choosing to do astronomy and, and astrophysics. When I sat down to look at deg uni degrees, because I, I just wanted to go to university, I thought, you know, it's, it's about time I go and get a tertiary education. Um, I sat down, I looked at medical science, I looked at um, 
astronomy and astrophysics. And I think I looked at like a business degree, honestly. Um, and it was, it really only took me a split second to go, you know what, I'm going to do astronomy. I'm going to do a science. Um, it's why not? Like, honestly, why not? Um, and it wasn't something as a kid that I thought was realistic, but somehow as an adult, I just sort of took the plunge essentially and thought I'm going to do this. Um, and, and, you know, lo and behold, it turned out, uh, that I, you know, failed my first subject, which was maths. And I'm sure if I kept at it, um, I probably would have been able to eventually get there, but that scared me off a little bit, which is why I ended up choosing geology. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy with how that has all panned out because it's come full circle for me anyway, um, essentially, because I'm still in, a, in the field or a field, which is astrobiology, which includes um, elements of astronomy in terms of, you know, understanding the cosmos and the universe and all that kind of stuff, um, which is essentially why I wanted to do astronomy in the first place. Um, and so, so in terms of choosing that major, I didn't find it difficult to choose, but, but certainly the barriers which I came across, which were, you know, maybe I'm not so good at particular subjects, or maybe I need to put more effort into particular subjects. And um, those were like kind of where I, yeah, where I, which were make and break essentially, make or break essentially, um, uh, barriers for me and and I I just kind of kept going in directions that felt right so I would do subjects that um, I essentially did sub in my degree even though it was uh, majored in geology and paleontology I did subjects which included also astronomy so um, so I did geology paleontology subjects and astronomy subjects um, so that I would have a well-rounded view. Um, what I was essentially trying to do is build my own astrobiology degree because we didn't, we don't have one here. <laughs> um, or we didn't have one, at least at the Macquarie University. Um, so I was essentially trying to build my own astrobiology degree, um, not really knowing what I was going to do with that undergraduate degree. Um, and it wasn't really until the end of the degree that I, I actually was like, oh, you know, I'd really like to do something, some research in under astrobiology. Um, and I almost did a, a honours, uh, I almost did an honours project on meteorites um, and actually decided against it just at the last minute because I had the opportunity to um, do the Pilbara uh, geology mapping project. And so, you know, really my pathway could have gone two ways. So I think the big, I didn't have, I didn't have challenges in terms of making decisions, but I des definitely had challenges in terms of, um, you know, understanding content, um, you know, and uh, like, you know, feeling like some things I was better at and some things I was worse at and trying to, trying to navigate um, essentially like, or hone in on the skills that were going to uh, get me to where I wanted to be in terms of, of researching in this area. Um, because sometimes you, you know, there are some things that you're not, not so good at. Um, and you're, you know, I, I've had worries where um, I think that I'm, you know, unable to pursue this passion because I'm not good at X or I haven't done it. I have, don't have enough knowledge in X. Um, and really, like, it comes down for me to how much hard, you know, hard work I've put in to maybe understand things that I haven't, haven't come easily to me or, or just go, you know what, like, I'm going to put my strengths into places or I'm going to put my effort into places where I'm really good at um, and not worry too much about the places that I'm not so good at. Um, and then so build, yeah, build, you know, th those have been my challenges, essentially. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I think those challenges and problems are actually part of the process where you're okay. Thank you so much for answering this question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And yeah, definitely. And actually, um, I might just add, um, I think you made a really good point about sort of the application of certain material as well, because sometimes, you know, you'll, sometimes I will learn things more because of what it's applied to 
um, like if I'm really interested in solving a particular problem, then I'm more likely to put in, you know, more effort and, um, and hard work and, you know, all the hours that are needed to understand that um, in order to answer that question. So, so sometimes it comes down to, um, it really comes down to like where your priorities lie as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, my next question is that, how does it feel to answer one of the mysterious questions that humanity has, has ever asked, you know? And how do you feel to answer this, that question as a geologist? Do you think geology is a better field to answer this question? Uh, oh. other <laughs> natural sciences? Uh, I definitely don't think, um, I, I think you know how I'm going to answer this. I definitely don't think that um, there is one discipline that is going to answer this question. Part of me doesn't, on earth at least, from a geological perspective, um, it appears that the rocks in which would have preserved the origins of life are probably gone. So from a geological perspective, I can't see it being answered, um, that question being answered. Um, but in saying that as well, I, I think that um, it takes many different disciplines to answer these big questions. And, you know, many of the um, scientists that came before us hundreds of years ago, Darwin and, um, and Newton and, and um, Da Vinci, were all polymaths or natural philosophers, and they used many different um, forms of science uh, to answer big questions. And I think that's how we answer big questions, which is why astrobiology is such a beautiful subject because it, it is inclusive of essentially all of the sciences. Um, and it needs all of the sciences, um, I think, to, to be answering these big questions. And so, you know, the geologists need to communicate with the chemists, need to communicate with the astronomers and the engineers and you know even the psychologists i guess if we're going to be sending humans to space and all that kind of stuff um in order to gain more information about the universe and potentially answering questions such as this um so yes in answering your question i think the answer would be no it takes more than just geology yeah um, <laughs> that's true uh, when i was a kid i was always interested in big questions and I didn't know when I was not involved in science at that time. So uh, I was trying to explore the, the meaning of life with the help of art. And I was into poetry and other subjects. I was doing theater and music and I'm trying to explore that there, there has to be one way where I can actually find meaning for my own self. So, mm. yeah. And then I, then I got to know about astrobiology and I was totally blown away that, okay, there is one subject who helped you to answer all of these major questions. And you can actually answer it by studying just one single subject. And then later I find, okay, this subject is actually much more diverse than I think it is. Mm. And it mm. is like very amazing. Yeah. Very amazing thing about this Yeah. Um, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's even nice, like, as you said, you know, you sort of started off in one particular area, kind of like getting excited about, about, you know, this, I, these ideas. And then you've kind of come, now you've sort of come even over to geology. And like, I mean, we know um, Bruce Damer started off as a um, computer scientist, essentially. And he was trying to answer this question using computer science. Um, and now he's, he's um, obviously working with Dave Damer and, and yeah. doing biochemistry. Um, so it is, it is so fascinating to see how different um, disciplines and areas of study can kind of um, cross over and intersect and, you know, all add value to, um, to answering these questions. And, you know, philosophy in particular, even, um, and imagination and science fiction as well, I think plays a role, um, you know, because it spawns ideas. And the, those, are the, those ideas are what kind of like drives, drive us to test things and pursue questions. Uh, how do you think that your research and how your approach towards answering this question is actually going to help you to solve this mystery? Okay, okay. Uh, so yeah, again, I, from a geological perspective, answering this question um, 
I think comes a lot down to, again, you know, understanding the environments um, in, in which are available to uh, pre prebiotic conditions or, or an, an earth or an earth like planet that is has habitable conditions. Um, so yeah, essentially ge geology is all about providing that, that context. And so for me, I guess I just want to uh, add knowledge about the geological record and the process in, in which have um, occurred, at least on our planet through time, um, which might have been conducive to the very earliest signs of life. Um, and I think that that adds a lot of value in terms of understanding context. Um, now, yeah, as a, I don't think that, you know, we will ever find rocks on earth that, um, that hosted um, the very first, you know, cellular organisms. Um, but, uh, you know, if life ever started on Mars, who knows, maybe the rocks old enough on Mars um, that host some sort of indication about um, origins of life. And so as a, as a geologist, I feel like we can, we can just keep investigating the, the very ancient rock record of Earth um, and see what other, you know, what are the secrets it, it holds um, about these very early environments. Um, and so that's, I mean, that for me, what, what is most fascinating to me is how geological processes have an impact on, on life and the evolution of life. And so, you know, even having plate tectonics allows for the carbon cycle and nutrient cycling. Um, and so, you know, how much of that kind of, those kind of geological processes uh, have an impact on the evolution or the emergence of life. And those are the kinds of things that, that, I, that really interest me and how I want to add value to astrobiology in answering that question by just really showing as much as we can about, um, about very early rocks um, on Earth and maybe one day Mars. That's true. Um, I really like your approach towards geology and astrobiology and how you are trying to answer uh, one of the big, biggest questions that, you know, as asked. you say that if these rocks could talk, but oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> those rocks are not conscious enough to answer all the questions that we are interested in. Sadly, no. They are lucky enough to have you to answer those questions and narrate their stories for us. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So welcome. Yeah. <laughs>